vlog. Okay, so hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy. Um, this is Moose. This is RJ. No, it's not. RJ's that are open. So we're going to start with In the Chapel, and of course with Moose here, we're going to do Proverbs 12.10, or 32.10, sorry. Who, whoever is righteous has regard for the life of his beast. This would be my beast. But the mercy of the wicked is cruel. So, yes, this is my beast of today. Um, he is having separation anxiety. He likes uh, Randall. But Randall is where? Huh? Is Randall with RJ? Is Randall with RJ? He is, isn't he? Yes. So, Moose is with me. He goes with me a lot, but I think he really likes his time with Randall, even though he gets on his nerves. <coughs> so... Hey, you gonna get down? Because you're gonna be too squirmy. I know. I know. It's very squirmy. So his little whole little body is just a wiggling. He got his bath today too, didn't you? Did you get a bath today? You did. You did. He hates his bath. Changed his blanket, mopped the floor, did his bath. He's mad. Mad, mad, mad. Huh. You gonna sit there? Alright, I'll let you sit there for a little bit, but you can't get licking my face. Um alright, so we'll start in the barn stalls. Um, we have one thing that happened that broke my heart. Um, Gonzo, the last of the original goats that we got back when RJ was a kid, um, passed away. But he was old, you guys. I, I have to say, with the weather flip-flopping the way it is, it gets hot and then it gets cold and then it gets hot and they're getting ready to be sheared in a couple of months and... Their fleece is heavy, and it's raining, and it's muddy, and it, honestly, he just was older. So, anyway, that kind of broke my heart. Huh, I know. See, he's going to do this the whole time through the podcast if I leave him up here. Um, I think in the barn stalls, that's really the only thing. Um, keeping things fed, putting out hay, um, that kind of stuff is about it. So... Uh, it's super muddy is all I can say. It keeps raining. Every time we get to where I think it's not going to rain or whatever, it, it like today is 70 degrees. Wednesday, we're supposed to have snow. Yeah, possibility of rain and snow. So, and I think it might actually be Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. I'm not sure. Uh, I only want, hey, 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 where are you going? Where are you going, squirmy butt? Um, I, uh, only watched the weather, I think Friday night, and they said they were going to keep watching it. This is Sunday, so, will you stop? I love you, but quit. I know what he wants. See, this is a time that him and I would go, and we'd get into bed, and we'd snuggle bug, huh? Mm-hmm. Yes, he's my snuggle buddy. Don't lick me. Quit. Okay, you're going to have to get down. You're going to have to get down. Yeah, you're going down. <laughs> All right, get down there. Be good. Um, yeah. No, go, 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 go. Go get your chewy. Where's your chewy? Go get your chewy. Um, anyway, I don't even know where I was. I've lost track. I'm eating a little pie, uh, oatmeal, cream pie, whatever. Uh, and I got my green tea here. Okay, so that was in the barn stalls. Really, that's the only thing. Um, it's moving on into the yarn farm, I think. No, mending fences. Um, trying to think of, we really just maintenance. We haven't had to do a whole lot, um, other than the list, of course, of the winter maintenance stuff that we normally get done. Uh, nothing's really tore up no big expense i told you about the truck got it back it's fine um and really i think that's it oh no we did tear something up okay you know when i say we i don't really mean me it's our day um the 16 foot stock trailer the u-bolts the i don't know what they're called but the little thingies like this slid back on one of the axles, or, or I guess it's the axle that slid back on it. Um, went to uh, Miller Time 
trailers, Miller Time Construction, it's manufacturing, that's what I'm looking for, Miller Time Manufacturing, um, Bub Miller, local guy here, um, he found the part I needed in his graveyard of stuff that they rebuild and uh, sold it to me pretty cheap and RJ's fixing it. So that's a good thing. Other than that, I think that's it. Um, in the yard farm, we do have a meeting coming up. We have, um, there's a, a bus tour company that takes farmers and retired educators around to different day trips and that kind of stuff and they're interested to adding us to their list so I'm gonna meet with them see what exactly they entail because we're not commercial and I won't be commercial we don't have pathways these people are gonna have to bring muck boots um, it's not a tour that is you know just tell them when we do tours like that we have the wheels set up out in the barn um, I have my big walking wheel out there. We have the milking stand. We have the goats. I mean, it's an actual let's get our hands dirty kind of thing. I don't know what they're looking for, so we'll see. All right, I have to do something. He likes oatmeal. There's your cookie. Now go on. Um, but I have a meeting with her in two weeks, I think. And she's supposed to tell me when she's back in this area. Oh, sorry. And uh, then we'll go from there. Um, I don't know how it's going to work out. We're just meeting to see if the two things will mesh. Okay. So, who knows? Might be a good thing, might be a bad thing. Um, all right. Also on the yarn farm. Quit. That's enough. No. I, I, um, he doesn't listen. Don't think that he does. He's the only dog. It actually will not listen to me. He wants what he wants. He's spoiled. Um, and yeah, I'm going to keep pushing him down. Uh, so I went to Omega. And I went just to teach. We didn't have a booth this year. If you follow along with us, you know everything that's changed and why. We didn't do that. Um, <laughs> I was laughing because Jennifer says next year she's just going to give me a big sign that says... Christie's Corner and uh, she's going to stick it wherever I happen to sit down because any place that I sit down people tend to conjure and I taught everything from drop spindling to wheel spinning. I had a lady actually bring her wheel and was having trouble with it and within 10 minutes I had her spinning. Um, she just was like oh my god she said she felt like a little teenage kid. She brought me some um, plum butter which is amazing. She knocked it out of the ballpark, you guys. <coughs> I've been eating it on my toast every morning since she gave it to me. <laughs> she only gave me just this little thing. I was like, dang, I'm going to run out of that. But it's really good. But while I was there, I did make some purchases. And the first thing that I found and I bought, of course, it's got fiber on it, so you're just going to have to deal with it, is a new drop spindle. Now, everybody knows I have a small drop spindle collection. I have one of stone. And I like my drop spindles to always be, um, they have to mean something to me. They have to, um, I've got one that's made with wood, that's hand spun, or hand brow, I, I don't know, lathed, I guess. Um, and then the disc is made with rosin and lace in it. It's, it's gorgeous. Um, and then I have a stone one. I have one that RJ has it's a little wheel I have a couple of those and RJ has painted his green made it John Deere and then I have this one and and here in a minute you'll know this is um okay so those that don't follow the reason that we didn't go as a booth is I didn't have RJ with me and that's because RJ was at the AFR which I will get to that here in just a minute but I found this drop spindle and it's lightweight it, it's not I mean, you can see the glue. It's handmade. I'm sure it's cut out of one of those um, laser kind of cutting things. But if you look, it's got a horse. Um, the only thing I don't like is it looks like it's biting its leg. But that's okay. <laughs> I don't know. I think the leg is on the other side, and that's supposed to be the reins or whatever. But 
it just you can distinctly see the horse head and all that so it it means something to me so RJ was at a rodeo and he wasn't there and so yeah and then the other thing that I got is this right here and I've never really been into this but since we have Layton and Layton is the if you remember her daddy was an Angora goat and her mom was a Lamacha goat and she only grows a blanket and her fleece is amazing so um, while I was there I was looking for something dark to replace that other stuff that I didn't like so that I could put it with that other yarn and have enough to do that project. So <coughs> I came up with this. It's not as dark as I like, but it is super soft. It is super, super fine. I mean, just amazing. And it's Pygora. So if you know, it's the Little Miniature goats crossed with um angora goats so pygora and i got i don't have the little card that came with this i took it off and started spinning and it i was spinning there at the festival so that's why i ended up teaching spinning um but here is this is from little hawk farm and that's where the pygora is from and the name of the animal is uh lucy and they're pygmy and Angora mixes. So, yeah, I think it's pretty cute. But I do like it. It's super soft, super nice, and it spins super fine. I love it. It spins up. Oops. I'm trying to tip it. There you go. It spins up just amazingly. So, I, I'm pretty happy with it. I've been playing with it. I say I'm going to put it on the wheel, but one wheel has merino on it and one wheel the walking wheel doesn't have anything on it and i don't want to do the pike or i don't like doing it in the roving i like doing it where i can just i don't know i guess i could just rip off a piece but i hold less in my hand when i do the walking wheel so um the kiwi has that wool that i bought that has all the nibs and stuff in it that i didn't like <coughs> i'm spinning it up they were laughing at me at the festival because they were like, oh, that's a pretty yarn. And I was like, yeah, it's going to go for sale. And they said, really? Why? I said, because I bought it for a project. And I explained the whole story. Everybody was in love with that yarn there. Not me. <laughs> I told them all this, and I'm just really picky. Sorry. Um, so I did teach. I taught spinning just sitting there. People that were having trouble. They'd come up, and I'd say, well... If you don't mind the input, here you go, and and I teach them, and they're like, oh my god, that's so easy. So I had them spinning in no time, even on the drop spindle and on the wheel. And then by the time it got to my class, one of the classes that I teach is something I don't put on the internet because people criticize a lot, and I don't want to hear it. Um, I do a fiber prep with just your fingers. Okay. Um, I teach that it doesn't take rules and it doesn't take fancy it doesn't take all the equipment and the things that you need buy a fleece you know buy part of a fleece buy a couple of ounces of fleece if you have a drop spindle or a spinning wheel sit there with your fingers play with it and prep it and just spin it um, in the olden days a lot of times they didn't have fancy things um, my grandmother didn't have any carters um, she always sat with a big feed sack, uh, which was burlap back then, and it had the wool in it, and she'd just knock all this dirt out. She'd do it on the front porch a lot of times because it had a lot of dirt and stuff in it, and so she'd just pull it out and line it up with her fingers, and then when she washed the yarn, it locked in that lanolin, which is being, called spinning in the grease, and that lanolin adds a layer of waterproof. Not great waterproof, but it adds a lot more um, protection for whatever you're making out of it so and of course over time the lanolin will wash out and wash out and wash out and so but while it's there a little bit always stays locked in when it's spun into grease so um yeah that's how they used that's how my grandmother used to do it she didn't have a whole lot you know and then 
it also, what I've noticed, is when I spin in the grease, um, and then I go and I wash it, and I rinse it, I put it right into the dye pot, and I don't have all that dry time. I, I don't have to wash it and rinse it and then let it dry and blah, blah, blah. I take it right from that, and I take it right to the dye pot, and then I dry it. So it honestly cuts your dry time, and that's something that people don't understand. Um, you don't have to wash it and spin it or rinse it and all this stuff and then dry it to turn around, spin it up, and then turn around and dye it and have all the dry time of that. So, um, and let's face it, the less water you use with wool, the less likely you are to felt it, especially when you're learning. So, yeah, it, it takes a lot of those chances away. And honestly, if you're just starting and you want to buy a couple of ounces of something to try, that's an easy way to do it. And you don't have to have big equipment. You don't have to have the picker and the, the card and, you know, it, it just is. So, anyway, I teach a class about that. And I've actually been asked several times why I don't put all that on face on uh, YouTube. And I said, why isn't that on YouTube? Why, why are we not told that we can do this? And I said, well, because I don't want to hear it. Um, anyone that I talk to that's in the fiber industry tells me, this is the process and this is what you have to do. I don't do it. I don't want to do it. And I don't mind spinning in the grease. It actually... That's my hands wonders. Um, we have a wood burning stove which dries out my hands, so it's a trade off. And I did warn them about too much lanolin and taking it slow. And I told them, I said, if you want to rinse it and dry it because you don't want to spend so much in the grease, fine. I said, or you can find low, um, what do you call it, low lanolin fleeces and spin those in the grease. And I said, and there's a ton of them out there. I gave them breeds. I, I told them. So anyway, I taught this class. And they were just amazed that I even said the stuff I said. And I know that there's probably going to be people that comment on this and say, if you Google or if you do this or if you do. No. I, I told them how to wash the yarn. I told them how to, you know. No. All those things that are on Facebook that you have to do it like this. No, you don't. I'm a no rules girl when it comes to fiber processing. I'm not scared to try new things and I'm not scared to ruin a little bit. You know, take a little bit, try it. If I ruin three ounces of fleece, I have 20 more out there. I have 20 in here. I'm good. You know, three ounces is not that big of a deal. Um, do you want to ruin it? No. Do you want to try new things? Yes. Do you want to find a process that works for you? Yes. If you just want to sit on your porch, pick it out one guy said that he had been gifted some alpaca and of course alpaca has no lanolin and he says i didn't know what i was going to do with it and he's got like three full fleeces and he says i don't have anything to process it with and i said you're just going to pick it out and spin it and he's already a spinner he says i just never really thought about it and i said you're going to spin it up just like you want i said the only thing that i do is i will use hand cards to blend two colors or something but a lot of times I don't even do that. I stick to one fleece and just go from there. So it was a cool class, a lot of information, a lot of people interested, um, a lot of compliments on it. Honestly, people have just looked at me and said, I just never thought about it, you know. And I said, well, picture the old lady, you know, on the little postcards or old drawings that you see. She's just sitting there spinning. You know, she's just got her thing here with her. And, you know, sometimes they'll have a little brush. Sometimes they're just picking at it and spinning it up. So, and yes, taking it with your fingers and going like this will line up the fibers, okay? Don't go there. I've already been there, okay? And, and I'm just not going to, I'm not going to even answer bad comments on this video about that, okay? So I taught that one. And then I taught, oh, what'd you do, Moose? And then I taught Tunisian crochet. I guess he ran into the chair. I don't know. He's over there being silly. Um, but then I taught my t Tunisian crochet class. And, uh, yeah. That one's always, uh, uh, it goes over really well. So I've got to get my other, um, how to do those uh, 
other, what do you call it? Stitches, that's the word I'm looking for online. But other than that, I'm really done with, with the Tunisian class stuff. I just have to get those videos up online. And then we have them gathered on our web, web page too. So that's a good thing. Um, so <coughs> in the fields, we'll move right on into it. Um, it's too wet to do anything. The building's still in the barn, um, in pieces in the barn. So um, until it dries up, there's nothing I can do. I can't even get out there to that spot. So I can't wait to get out there to that spot. I'm super excited. I want the outside up so that I can start doing the stuff on the inside, which is my favorite part. So um, I have it all up here, what I want it to look like. I can't wait to get it there. So anyway, um, there's really nothing going on there. Uh, what else? In the farmhouse is pretty much where all the action's been happening. Um, RJ made the AFR. And he walked away with fourth in the average on Coop. So, um, yeah, he was tickled to death, and that's good. Today he, he left last night, and him and his girlfriend and Randall went to a rodeo, and then they're going to one this afternoon. So um, it, he probably won't be home till like, 10 o'clock at night, and I have to leave at 8 to go to work. So, um, yeah. But the only other thing that I have, and I really don't even know what segment to put it in, um, but it's kind of fun and it might give somebody another idea. Um, we got a letter in the mail and it says, Straw Family Farm. My wife and I are showing our kids that you can plan a vacation without the internet or social media. We plan to travel to Oklahoma for our next vacation and we found your address in an tr Oklahoma travel magazine. Could you please help by sending me some brochures, pictures, or other information available that shows all you have to offer for family fun? Thank you. And I'm not going to give his name and, and address, but, and it's just a short little letter. Um, and we will be putting together a care packet for them. Um, I've got some Oklahoma postcards, and I've got... Um, just some other things that we advertise in. Um, it is what it is. So we're going to help him out, and we don't have a whole lot, but we are going to send him stuff. And if I have to just print something off the Internet, I'm going to do that too. <laughs> <coughs> so anyway, um, what else? I think that's really all that's been going on. Um, I am getting ready for my birthday. Oh, my birthday. That's right. So, this year, I am going to go to a concert for my birthday. Um, it's Jody Messina, and it's just a little free concert, but I really like her. And I'm going to go with some old friends, and we're going to have a blast, I guess. So, there's my, it's my birthday. I don't know what day this will upload, but my birthday is Thursday. So, um, I'm recording on Sunday, birthday's on Thursday, and we're just going to go out and have a nice time, have dinner, and then go to this little concert and go from there. So, I don't know. Sounds like fun. We'll see how it turns out. <laughs> so, anyway, and it's only fair because I took RJ to a concert. If you were with us back in October, he went to Ned Ledoux, and it's at the same place. So, um, yeah, he went to Ned Ledoux and enjoyed his very first concert on his 22nd birthday at track five. And so that's where I'm going. Um, it's at the hard rock, but I don't gamble. So I'm just going for the music. <laughs> oh, well, um, anything else, Moose? <laughs> He's back under his blanket. Moose, are you going to tell him anything else? Huh? Oh, here comes blanket and all. You want to say goodbye? Huh? You do? All right. You gonna say goodbye? Not to me. To them. Hey, hey, hey! Out there. Yeah. Say bye bye. Say bye bye. Do you say bye bye? Yeah. He, say bye. he thinks we're going someplace. He's got his own seatbelt and everything in the car. He thinks he's going whenever I call. Say bye bye. Hey. Hey. Right here. Yeah. My face is all I'm gonna get. All right, Moose. Say bye bye. Bye bye. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Um, we will keep you posted.
<laughs> I'm gonna get out now. Um, so, all right. Bye, and RJ. Y'all just wish him luck. He's rodeoing a lot and working for his uncle. So, and Moose is a mess. Mm-hmm. All right. See you later, guys. <laughs> Stop. I can't get the button.